Okay, so when we're talking about hoarding, the concept of animal hoarding is part of it as well. And I'm going to turn back to Ann Irwin about that. What's the mentality of people who, who collect animals, so to speak? Well, there are variations, um, just as Marla and Adrian talked about, not, not everybody is all alike, but they, but they all say they love animals. They all certainly started out loving animals, but sadly, um, their capacity to take care of the animals that they have has somewhere along the line diminished and um, animals may be suffering and neglected in these situations. Are these just big-hearted people who, as you say, have a love for animals who say, I, I can take care of them when someone else isn't or they're not getting any care elsewhere, so I'll do it? Well, some of them think they're rescuing animals. Some of them are absolutely certain that no matter how terrible the conditions are in their own home, that no one else could possibly care for the animal as well as they do. They, they're blind to what is around them. They've um, become desensitized to their own surroundings, so it starts to look normal to them. Does that also, without being terribly graphic, but does that desensitizing also include their sense of smell? Because I can't imagine walking into some of these places and not realizing hey, this is not oh, right. Very much so. Very much so. They, yeah, they mean, don't smell the house that they live in and they, they don't realize um, that it's a problem. Now they must realize to some extent that it's a problem because most hoarders are very secretive. <laughs> Animal hoarders are quite secretive and their shades are drawn and their curtains are drawn and nobody ever um, gets inside their house and, and they even put up plastic bags and, and over the windows to keep the smell locked into the house so that the neighbors won't smell. So these are things that all hoarders seem to have in common that, that they keep it a secret, um, they're very possessive and they think that what they're doing is okay as long as it's not bothering anybody else. It really can affect families though, right? Because a lot of people won't go into a parent's home or a friend's home when it, when it looks like this. Absolutely. Most often it's more troublesome to families than it is the individuals. And so what do you suggest to them at that point? If, if I'm a daughter who says, Mom, I just can't come to your place for dinner because it grosses me out, does it mean that my family relationship has to suffer or can we improve it? Can we fix it? It certainly can be improved. It depends on the individuals and their willingness to communicate with one another and to share their experiences and their feelings about it and their willingness to participate in treatment. Okay, so is treatment absolutely necessary or can somebody do this by themselves? Treatment is necessary. Is it? Oftentimes when it, family members, out of their you know, greatest willingness and, and desire to help, want to go in and clean out houses for these individuals. But the problem with that is oftentimes the individuals don't learn the skills that are necessary in order for them to be able to maintain that on their own. So they'll simply reclutter. So they can relapse. You've actually seen people relapse sure. with, with um, hoarding. Okay, so um, help is, therapy is needed or counseling is needed and then you need help with the actual uh, decluttering and you yes. give them some power, let them help with they each possession. The, they have all the power. Okay. I let them know they're in total control. I will not throw out anything without their permission unless I'm absolutely certain that it's okay. Okay. They need to learn the skills so that they eventually can maintain it on their own. That's very, very key okay. to the process. And if there's someone who is hoarding animals, not only is it bad for them and the animals, it's against the law. Right. Um, that's one, one thing that differs in animal hoarding where you, some of other kinds of hoarding cleaning up is voluntary on the part of the, um, the hoarder un unless they're about to be evicted because of the problem or something like that. But, it, but if animals are actually being neglected, then that's a violation of the cruelty law. Okay. And so it, it's not entirely their choice right. what they do with the animal. and, and the important That's thing, where we come in. The important thing is that if they are suffering from hoarding, that they get help. And I want to thank each and every one of you for providing the information available to our viewers today so that maybe you will uh, inspire someone to get help. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. And we do encourage you, if you are looking for help, to um, get it. Look at the numbers that we have here on the screen. And you can always email me at lynn at lynndoyle.net, and we'll give it to you as well. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you the next time.